What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the No World Order Podcast IG Live Edition. <laughs> I am your co-host, Drew. I am your other co-host, Zuck. And it is 3.33 in the afternoon. Oh, foreboding. Uh-oh. And it is uh, December 9, 2020, this year. It's flying by at a snail's pace. Uh, I was going to say, is it flying by? (laughs) Kind of. Yes and no. Kind of. We'll see. We'll see. Everything's getting exciting. Are we doing a little current events before we get into our subject? Uh, We can talk about anything. Yeah, we can. What what did you have in mind? Nothing. I just feel like it's been a while since I've been here. I I mean, nothing has literally, like changed not one thing has but the cases are spreading aren't you concerned oh you're talking covid (laughs) i was talking political but yeah um neither one has done a whole lot though yeah because even newsome fucking throwing lightning bolts down from his ivory tower it's the same shit he's been saying i think trump made a recent speech saying that there was fraud but again like you were saying no nothing new nothing new nothing is being solidified um, I thought yesterday was kind of going to be a key day because I thought that was when the election certifications were going to be starting. Okay. But um, I don't know. It just uh, seems like nothing has really happened. I know there's this lawsuit in Texas that's supposed to be happening that could be going to the Supreme Court. I just feel like if something gets to be heard by the Supreme Court, I think then there can be some actual progress but until then it's just getting shot down at every level so far all the cases just keep getting shot down as far as the lawsuits going on and a lot of them aren't even from trump and his team they're just from like surrounding republicans and other people and things like that but um so a lot of people oh trump loses again trump loses again but it's like he hasn't even really filed his lawsuits yet you know so but I don't know if he does. Is it getting too late? I mean, I know we have the fourteenth is when the electoral college is supposed to vote, right? Yeah, but I know officially, officially January twentieth. Well, no, you know that's when the, the inaugur- next one's supposed to be sworn in. Yeah. yeah, so we'll know by then. So if the lawsuits are going, not going, I don't really know. Me neither. But um. It's all just interesting. I mean, I'm seeing these some of these testimonies. I'm not watching, uh, like, the live ones fully and all that. But you're seeing the evidence being presented with video evidence. And, like, it just doesn't make sense how they're not giving this a chance in court. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And you're seeing it on whatever platform you're watching if you're watching it live. And it's like, how are they not taking this into account? It, it doesn't make any sense to me. So no real news to report, but I do think it's conspicuous. I feel like everything is conspicuous by absence. Trump's not doing much. Biden's not doing much. Nobody's doing anything. No one's doing fucking shit. Everyone's letting the corona news take the waves again. Now it's the COVID news again. And yeah, we we got this. I'm sure you got it too on your phone like yesterday or something. Of course. That uh, message just saying, oh, you're in a mandatory lockdown or something be sure covid is spreading rapidly or something rapidly. like that like i have the screenshot i was like get, i want to pose it and be like get the fuck out of here stop yeah, sending me this shut bullshit, up. dude like it doesn't make any sense again i don't care about the case numbers um and they are kind of reporting on the death numbers <clears throat> again and again i don't even really necessarily care too much about the death numbers because we know from the beginning that those numbers were manipulated yeah, exactly i saw a meme somebody posted and um it was from somebody else like on twitter or whatever and it started with i don't want to hear about the death rate anymore and then went on to say some stupid shit and i'm like that's a perfect example of why this is where it is because mm-hmm. people don't want to hear facts they yeah. don't want to hear about how exactly. people survive it they don't want to hear all those things they want to hear fear yeah and it's ridiculous so okay yeah i guess there's us I catching will up shout <laughs> out what is it riverside county sheriff um they came out and said that they're not going to enforce this lockdown they're gonna let you know businesses go about and do their own thing and you know take the risk upon themselves he's like once it, like the sheriff did this like three four minute video and he just came out saying like we went through the first wave and we saw what it did we need to like you know if you want to open up your business you can we're not gonna we're not gonna arrest you for operating freely you know so 
there's a handful of counties that are doing that. I wish San Diego would come out and be one of those counties, but um, you know, shout out to the ones that the sheriffs that are actually mm-hmm. protecting the freedoms of the people. No you know, kidding. you don't see that. I mean, they do it all, all the time. We just don't see it. We normally see the bad stuff going on, you know, and uh, the summer was kind of highlighted both the good and the bad kind of how you looked at it. If you were for the protesters, you saw a lot of police brutality, but if you were for the police, you saw them like protecting and protecting businesses and other people as well. So I don't know. It, it's interesting for sure. Theatricality and deception. I did see that the mayor of San Diego was saying some shit about how closing down outside dining is not based on anything scientific. Yeah. So people are starting to pop up in higher and higher positions to your point saying things like that shout out fatties and escondido yeah it's all vegan drew i know you told me about Dude. that before i gotta check it out and now especially that they're like hey we're fuck gonna that. we're still gonna do this and we're gonna open up seating inside and outside again <laughs> yeah. they're they're killing it i think local tap house on oceanside said they're gonna stay open and then coffee i believe with a k i tagged them yeah. recently too so all and all on the same day so there's some sort of coordination there's some sort of something going on behind the scenes to where people are going no yeah and they're announcing <laughs> it at the same time so i'm happy i have more friends i mean what you know? we need to do is like really organize a protest of people going out and defying the stay at home order it's like they did it all summer you know what i mean by with these black lives matter protests and it's like that's what we need to do is be like, we're not going to do this anymore. Like take a stand on, you know, whatever days, whatever, organize it. And then also open up your businesses too. And like yeah. defy it that way as well. You I know? think that would be more effective, especially oh, yeah. for, I want to say our side. Like yeah. we all pick a day and we all go to a restaurant local. That's not following the shutdown orders. Yeah. That's how we pro you protest with money, you yeah. know, with fucking dollars coming in. So exactly. not fucking raiding targets and shit. I don't know. That doesn't no. make any sense to me. No, a lot of them were like 99 cent stores. I saw <sighs> that in some area. I forget which state it was, Real. but dude, they were in a five below and a 99, like a dollar tree. And it's like, dude, that's what you're going after. And there was like a Lowe's in the same parking lot that was untouched. Oh, I'd be at Lowe's. Exactly. You know what I mean? I need a new pickaxe. Exactly. And then you can use like, yeah, it it just makes no sense. Like the logic of what was going on at some of these protests. If, if, if you were protests, riots. Yeah. Um, is like, if you were going to be smart about it, yeah, you would go get like a power tool, get some actual value shit yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. i'm not condoning it but it's like right dude if, if you're gonna do that like at least be smart about it but no, no they're, they're rating like a dollar tree and a five below and it makes no sense it doesn't it's really it's also really sad it makes me it sad is. like that's sad that they're like oh lawlessness let's go to 99 cent store and get some fucking food get like, some made from oh, china shit get, you know? he, yeah like, high fructose corn syrup fucking yeah. all filler and soy bs Oh. Bums me out. Hey, we eat <clears throat> soy. I minimize it. Try to. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't fucking go to plant power anymore. I so know, that, that right? takes a lot of it off the I table right know. there. Fucking plant so power. So true. So true. They're just sitting there harassing just, their female employees, making people wear masks. In a drive thru. Just taking man. freedoms. In a drive thru. Are you kidding me? And cash only? Or, I mean, card only? Yeah, no like fucking kidding. Like, a credit card is less dirty than cash? Like, this just <laughs> makes no sense. Like, Meanwhile, my mom wears a mask everywhere. She sanitizes her debit card before and after she gives it to people. Oh, my God. She got COVID. Yeah. So I I don't wear a mask. I yeah. don't do any of that stupid shit. No yeah. offense, anyone. And I'm I'm doing okay. I mean, I don't know if this is breaking the law or whatever, but yeah, you you were exposed to COVID. I don't give a fuck. I could possibly could have been when I went to do a window cleaning job. Like oh nice, a handful of days after I got a text from the lady saying, oh yeah, I just want to let you know I tested positive, and just want to let you know. And I was like, okay, thanks for letting me know. And then a couple days later, she was like, oh, I got tested again and I'm negative. And I was like, yeah, exactly. I don't, but you're a case now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you, thanks exactly. for adding to the case. Oh, it drives me crazy. Fucking but. fake positive. I actually, um, well, I gotta, I gotta like edit some of this story out for internet. Okay, I'll fast forward. Went to the CDC website. I had been exposed to somebody. I've been with somebody all day right like close quarters sharing french fries 
whatever. Um, and then they tested and they're like, oh, you know, I'm positive. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Went online, went to the CDC website. My yeah. wife did actually. And we followed like the steps, like, were you exposed? This and that, whatever, right? To see if you need to get yeah, tested. Yeah, yeah. Even being with that person who was positive all day, right next to him, close contact, they said, I don't need to get a test. If I'm, if, and the deciding factor was this, if I don't have any symptoms, I don't need to get a test. But the fucking first thing that everybody says when you're like, oh, I'm not sick, I don't have any symptoms, they're like, oh, you're asymptomatic. You can yeah. be spreading because you're asymptomatic. Exactly. You know, but the CDC website says, uh, you, don't you don't have any symptoms, get, you're good. You don't have to yeah. get tested. Save it for the people that actually do need to get tested. When are they going to update that and pull the old switcheroo just like when they said masks weren't? effective no kidding surgeon general <laughs> uh, fucker yeah but um yeah i mean that's why i'm saying i don't care about the case numbers it's like I, I heard a nurse breaking down how like five one person can be responsible for five positive cases but they all technically be positive and you not even have it so it's like of course the numbers are going to be skyrocketing when we're using <laughs> these faulty testing metrics and things like that you know no it's kidding. And if, yeah, people die every day. It's sad, you know, like, but that's what it is. People die every single day. And if you aren't taking care of yourself and your health, then you're more susceptible to being hit with the virus and having it affect you more drastically and things like that, you know? So that's yeah. why you got to really take care of your, your health and your immune system and, you know, but anything can happen at any time of the day, you know? Everybody always says, you can walk out of here and get hit by a bus, you know? Like, that's yeah. a comment. That could happen, but, you know, at least be mindful of your health, you know? Yeah. But um, is that kind of all we had? I, I think guess? so. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like we could stretch that rant out to a whole hour, but we can put a pin in it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you were the one who kind of introduced this story i don't know how you came across it or how Me you were neither. introduced to it but um yeah why don't you introduce us to this uh the missing panama girls dude so for whatever reason this story has consumed my mind for it's been about two and a half weeks now wow and even with like those monoliths popping up everywhere i'm yeah. like yeah, yeah yeah okay whatever it's a cult bullshit i get that but uh, what happened to these girls yeah you know um I keep a list of topics or things I hear that I'm like, oh, I got to come back to that. Yeah. And this was just one of my open windows of my like hundred open windows in my phone. So I'm going through trying to get rid of them and like taking notes on what I need to go back to. And I was like, what is, who's Lizanne Froon and Chris Kramers, you know? So then I looked it up and I'm like, oh, that's a weird story. I go, I, I go to Wikipedia first to see what the bullshit is basically. Yeah. And then, um, and then I'll start looking on DuckDuckGo and then you start to hear what other people are saying and then it's a whole fucking wormhole Yo, then you have yeah. no idea what's going on oh, but yeah. back in march 2014 these two dutch students uh 21 and 22 uh decided to travel to panama so they go to panama well let me back up let me back up i'm gonna give an overview and then we can kind of dissect it a little as we go okay these two young girls dutch go to different country on vacation on holiday they're having fun whatever they go out for a hike they never come back so that isn't crazy, right? Like, unfortunately, we hear about that kind of stuff happening all the time. But when you start to pick apart everything that happened in between and all oh, the kind yeah. of different signs, it points to, I'm not really sure what. I'm actually excited to hear your opinion on it. Yeah. Um, but let me go back to the beginning. Okay. So these two, they had a stopover in Houston, whatever, whatever. They end up in Panama. And they're there to do some sightseeing, to learn Spanish. And teach language at a school right so they're traveling they're having fun but they're also like doing volunteer work they're not just charity fucking around getting junk yeah yeah, yeah 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 they're doing some charity work um at a, a, a school called aurora a-u-r-a i probably mispronounced it mm -hmm. um so they're supposed to go there in panama for i want to say like a week is what they were supposed to be doing the for the duration of time they're staying with a host family which apparently i actually learned a it lot about panama a six week vacation yeah, and and yeah. they had because they had gone to um, somewhere right before, yeah, and hung out and had fun or whatever. So like they, they were, I think, two weeks into the six weeks, oh, okay, uh, just about like by the time this was rolling gotcha, around. Gotcha. So they finally get to this leg of their trip. They're in Panama. They're staying with a host family who actually lives like right next to the school they were supposed to be volunteering with. Mm -hmm. um, they got a notice just like a day or two i think before they were supposed to be volunteering that for whatever reason they can't volunteer and they were really disappointed they're really let down and then now they have like all this other time to fill 
So in making new plans and doing these things on, I think it was the Tuesday by that calendar year, they were going to go hiking. They're going to go hiking. There's a lot of places to hike out there in Panama. Apparently, it's very jungly, a lot of rainforest going on. It's a destination, it's for a, sure. And I have I have, I have nothing, no idea about Panama until I started reading about this yeah. stuff. Other than Van Halen, right? I mean, exactly. come on. Like, that's about exactly. it. So, uh, so it was interesting. So I, I went into it like, is it a poor third world country? Is it more developed like us? I assume, I always assume anywhere it has both, there's gay. You know? yeah. Right, yeah, I had no yeah. idea. So everything was kind of an option. I didn't have a pigeonhole in my head of, uh-huh. if someone's like, oh, someone got lost in LA, I'm like, they got fucking murdered and eaten, you know? Uh-huh. Like, I, I just jumped to there, but I had no idea. So they were supposed to go volunteer at this school. It didn't work out. They uh, make some new plans. And they had a scheduled hike for Wednesday, April 2nd. The 2nd, yeah. Yeah, but on Tuesday, April 1st, 2014, they set out on a hike on the Pianista Trail. I'm going to mispronounce Pianista. it. Pianista. Pianista? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Like, uh, like named after a piano, I'm guessing. Yeah. And I'm going to leave out some details about the maps and the links and stuff because it's not completely pertinent and it kind of just serves to confuse more. Yeah. I'm trying to do like bullet points because you'll see this thing will go on forever. I know. There's so but, many details about it. And and what's interesting because these girls are Dutch. But yet not a lot of details about it. There's know? a lot of like speculation yeah. and a lot of people trying to find stuff. So they're, exactly. they're Dutch. They're in Panama. And so a lot of the stuff, I don't know about you, that I was finding was interpreted two or three times exactly and so like it's broken Interviews english were from spanish that were translated to dutch and then to english and i didn't even finish pulling on all of the uh threads i wanted to uh-huh. but okay back to the beginning so they decide on april 1st they're gonna go on this hike just them two right no no guide or anything like that which is weird because they had one set up for the next day to go with a guide um, so they went on a popular trail, the Pian- Pianista, is that how yeah, you said it? Pianista. Pianista yeah. Trail in Boquette is how I'm going to pronounce it. Yep. Uh, very jungly, a lot of waterfalls. <clears throat> this is corroborated. I guess Chris and Lizanne, the two girls, were in pretty much constant communication with parents and one of their boyfriends. So they had communicated that they were going to go on this hike. A taxi is said to have picked them up and brought them to a start on the trail. The taxi driver declared that he dropped them off in the afternoon at 1.40 p.m. But the clock on their digital camera, we'll come out of that later, suggests they started around 11 in the morning on their hike. This was like the first of a lot of inconsistencies. That's a pretty Hold big on, gap. So what did it say? So the taxi driver that dropped them off near the trail yeah. said he dropped them off at 1.40. But on their digital camera oh, yeah, clock... 11 because yeah they got to the summit at one right and yeah when i first started reading before noon like 11 is uh-huh. when i was seeing that they were getting there and doing stuff yeah but the taxi driver is saying he dropped off at 140 what? so there's a red flag for me already oh, i didn't even see that that's yeah. what i'm saying every time you try and read about this shit you'll find something new huh it's fucking wackadoo and i'm like that's a huge inconsistency yeah, why was that not followed up on definitely not the same time if <laughs> like, yeah if if they're there at 11 and he says 140 you're a suspect homeboy yeah. come with me you know yeah. what i mean i'm asking you more questions so that was the first and a lot of inconsistencies that at least i found uh-huh. according to one of the girl's fathers and boyfriend chris last had contact with uh stefan who i believe is her boyfriend by phone at 1 p.m uh, her dad did not specify whether it was a phone call or a text message. So we have them communicating with the outside world up until, I'm sorry, that's not one, two o'clock, which lends itself more, I think, to them getting there at 11. Yeah. Because, yeah. You're not going to get somewhere on, in 20 minutes. Later on, I don't know how much detail you got, but they get to the top of the route that they're hiking at the Continental Divide. And they take pictures at around one or something like that. It's around that time. Yeah. And then a couple hours later, that's yeah. I'm I'm sure we'll get into it, but yeah. And yeah. I actually tried. I tried to cut out a lot of details so we could kind of get through bullet points. But you also want to hit on a bunch of the details yeah, you because kinda need to as well. Yeah. 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 It, it's it's tough. Um. Okay, so I'm going to read a little bit. I don't want to be too reading heavy, but I want to get all the facts out. Residents at the start of the trail have later declared to a Dutch journalist that they warned the girls not to walk there by themselves. However, the girls waved their worries away, and there was word that they took a local dog. 
this is another this is my second inconsistency i've read a bunch of uh, versions of the story and at first and like the first three stories i read this dog belonged to the host family yeah right apparently the dog's name is blue or blue. azul i'm gonna call him blue because it's easier for me to pronounce <laughs> um everything i read said local fam local family the one that they were staying yeah. with then i was reading something and apparently it it's was just the restaurant the cafe owner's Dog. Right. Yeah. And apparently in and, Panama, they kind of just let animals wander around, walk around. It, you know, it sounds like every dog, every dog and cat is kind of a stray, uh -huh. but they, you know, they go to tend to be in a certain area. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. They know where they get fed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No kidding. No kidding. Um, suspicion rose, however, when the dog's owner declared that Blue returned to Bouquet that same day without the two girls. Yeah. That would have fucking freaked me out. If I'm a host family, I give them my dog. And then they, the dog comes back. Like at first, I was like, "How the fuck did the dog get back?" Yeah. And like, yeah, and like, exactly. how did he not get hit by a car or fucking whatever? Because I'm thinking here, but apparently, like I said, in Panama, they are like, I don't know, wild animals. They can just kind of do whatever they uh -huh. want without anyone fucking with them. So, okay, that kind of explains that. Still fucking weird that the dog is gone and the girls are gone, or the dog's back and the girls are gone. The host family is said to have searched the area surrounding their home once they realized the guests had not come back in the evening. They found no sign of the girls. Giving them the benefit of the doubt, the host family decided they would wait until the morning to continue their search. Yeah. That's the second, third thing. I'm like, why? why? Like, you, if you're a host family, you're like semi-responsible. Like, what yeah. if they were out there fucking wreaking havoc? But what you know? I heard is, it's like, they were, they're adults, you know, they, they could have just been out exploring the nightlife and, you know, yeah. they're, they're 21, 22 years old, you know what I mean? <sighs> I so know. It's, like, it's easy to say in hindsight. A, yeah, but yeah and you're in a different country foreign country you want to explore they don't i guess they don't fucking know they could have gone back to deutschland yeah, for all they know exactly Fuck. so yeah who who really knows but yeah i wouldn't i probably wouldn't be concerned the first night as well really yeah because Bro. like uh, two young girls in a, in a separate country i'd be fucking i would be well i'm paranoid about everything but i don't know i don't know it's just like oh they could just be out you know yeah exploring the city exploring the nightlife it's that would like, be my concern man yeah it is concerning but i probably it's not our choice i probably would wait till the morning as well but that's just me interesting yeah that probably makes more sense but and apparently they did don't <laughs> Don't take the facts. Not gonna. I'm not going to. I'm not no. gonna fucking happen. Dude, you hear? I'm here. Okay. So yeah. Intermission. Note, intermission. Yeah, <laughs> side note. So, dude, I'm. I like overheard uh, the TV news being played from my upstairs neighbors, and um, I heard them like playing the news, and there there was oh the legit conversation of them saying, "Oh, do businesses have the right to force you to get a vaccine or to let you enter in if you can't prove?" That you've taken the test or whatever. Your papers. I'm like, dude, I was calling this. Yeah. It's annoying, too, <laughs> because everyone labeled a conspiracy theorist has been saying this shit for fucking years. Exactly. Right? And now that it's here, people are still not acknowledging it. They're Ridiculous. just going along with it. Of course they fucking That's are. Crazy. Bending over and taking it. Dude. I'm not bending over. Neither is Frederick you Levy. Could, yeah, you could check my previous podcast on the Real World Podcast pretty early on that... Um, I was predicting this, that this is what is going to happen, and now a handful of months later, it is legit happening. And that is because, yeah, we're more conspiracy theory minds, and we've heard <laughs> this narrative before, but now it's actually going to be implemented. It's like we're going to be technically shut out of society if we don't comply, and that's super scary, man. It's but if, crazy. We're, if we get to be a third of that society, then we're a fucking force to be reckoned with, are we not? Like... The fucking people up top need the battery pack to supply them with energy from down below. That's yeah. us. Yeah. If they lose a fourth or a third or fucking half of the people are like, fuck you, no vaccine. I don't need your store. Then they're going to fucking freak out. Yeah. Like they, they don't want us, but they fucking need us down here at the bottom of the pyramid. You know what I mean? They're not yeah. going to let us fucking go out into the woods and live together like on the path, which would be fantastic. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I mean, I, I heard them talking about that. Just overhearing it. Just, I was 
standing outside getting some sun and uh yeah i heard it from upstairs i was like dude i can't believe this is happening crazy i go back and forth sometimes i hear shit and i'm like God, like this sucks what am i gonna do like i got a kid on the way blah 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 and then the other half of the time i'm like you know what fuck them i'm gonna yeah. do whatever i want whatever. wherever i want yeah. and there's a bunch of crazy motherfuckers out there like me too that are gonna do the same shit yeah you know what i mean and who's gonna be who's who's gonna stop us yeah Who's going to, no one, yeah. right? You know, even especially if the cops are already saying they're going to start standing down on shit. Hopefully. Hell man. yeah. Hopefully. Stand down on the right shit. Get those fucking exactly. riot. Get those rioters. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah. The ones looting and shit. Okay. All, All right. right. Back to the oh my God. regular got, sc scheduled program. Gotta get that fucking vax talk out. <laughs> Okay, where were we? Um, okay, yeah, Chris and Liz Lizanne were said to have scheduled a, a, lo a tour of the local guide for a private walking tour on April 2nd. We covered that. And he um, was so, and he was supposed to take them, take them to his private ranch a few miles out. I did not see that. So you haven't heard about this guide? So on, I, dude, on the day before their um, hike, he he asked them to take, he asked the girls to take them on a all inclusive overnight stay hike at his ranch. And they declined, wow. and they scheduled the, the regular hike with them the next day. They decided to go off on this hike themselves. And the, Were they doing that so they the would be And the guide is one of the first ones to find some of the shit a couple miles away from the ranch. So I'm just going to start throwing out theories. And he's still a guide. Oh, my God. I'm just going to start throwing theories out or questions out, right? Let's just mull some shit over. Is it possible that they were like, no, we don't want to go to your fucking private ranch, but we'll schedule a tour for you on the second. Yeah. And meanwhile, they're like, fuck it. Let's just go on the first ourselves so yeah. we can say we already went. We don't want to go on the scheduled hike with you anymore. Fucking weirdo. Yeah. Right. Oh, and when they were found or determined missing, the guide came because, okay, so they missed their scheduled appointment with the guy. Yes. And so he goes to their hostel yes. and looks in their room with, and breaks the law and could have been tampering with evidence or who knows but he goes to the hostel ch goes in their room unsupervised and like is looking around and stuff so that guide is super suspicious and sketchy dude it's a very interesting yeah so somebody with probably good knowledge of how to navigate through that rainforest 100 oh, percent. you know what i mean yeah fuck man see this is the kind of shit that keeps me awake at night like when this like I'm trying to go to bed and I think about the story. I'm like, and it's like he provided them with some information and some certain things. And, you know, I heard something that they, Panama doesn't want this story getting out because of it, it'll affect tourism. So maybe yep. he just bribed them and, you know, kind of swept it under the rug. And that's kind of why we have this weak investigation into what happened. But, um, yeah, there's something with that guide for sure. He, they ran, he ran into him. Uh, day before the scheduled hike and wanted to take him out to the the private ranch overnight stay all that stuff and private then, ranch yeah and then that day you know who else had a private ranch <laughs> going, Epstein going by themselves and then you know then whatever happened happened okay so that's the first time I've been able to make a theory about why they went themselves the first on the first as opposed to waiting to the second to go with a guide uh -huh. maybe they were trying to find an out while lot without looking rude and uh -huh. offending we'll get to this too but i was reading someone who has knowledge of traveling in that area and they were saying like basically the dudes down there can be very aggressive with foreigners yeah they and don't like americans is what i heard oh well fuck them yeah they use our fucking dollar though don't they oh yeah <laughs> i bet they fucking do uh, yep. um but yeah, so maybe they were trying to walk that line between being respectful but also having their boundaries. Uh huh. Very interesting. Well, yeah, they weren't American, so I don't. Yeah, know. yeah. But uh, maybe they just grouped them all together because they're racist. Foreigners. So, so uh, apparently later on that day, we're still on the second. Members from the language school contacted the authorities and the girls' family, families. So word is spreading, and while fucking the tour guide is doing whatever the hell he's doing, the families are finding he out. He starts to go search for them on the 3rd. Mm -hmm. The next morning, I have April 3rd. Authorities are said to have conducted an aerial search of the forest as well as foot search with the help of local residents. Sounds like the guide was one of those residents. Yes. Fuck, man. Which, like, if you're part of the, the search, you could easily lead people away from exactly. where the shit is. You know what I mean? Exactly. They got nowhere near... The searches didn't go nowhere near where they were found. Oh my, see, okay, I'm glad you know a little bit about the maps and stuff because I, I 
put a pin in all that to try and get through the story uh days through two days two through six parents hadn't heard from the girls after hearing from them consistently it it's important to me to figure out these girls patterns who they are what they do how they behave and act because if you don't text your parents for days on end it's not that big of a deal that yeah. you don't text your parents but apparently these girls were texting like hey changing plans are doing this communication yeah, yeah. which yeah. fucking like that leads me to believe that they are smart girls they yeah. knew how to travel they knew how to stay in contact they knew they had almost like street smarts yeah you know which you have to develop when you're traveling because motherfuckers will take advantage of you yep uh no text or calls were returned uh pianist to root brought the girls to a height of 1890 meters which is 6200 feet above sea level is that the point that you were talking about where they took pictures yes okay yeah so the uh this is numbers That's i'll throw them the, out there the picture was taken is that what it says well, trail starting at an altitude of 4,192 feet. They had to climb around 610 meters. Did you um, get into any of the pictures that were found or e taken? Or yeah. Anything? Okay. Uh, yeah, I got some of that. Because I just know at the top of the the legit trail that people still go on today and everything. Um, go it, figure. It goes up to the Continental Divide. And up at that point, it still has service. But there was they took like three pictures, like one of them like a selfie together and then one of each of them or something like that yes and that was like one of the last uh kind of pictures that we saw for a handful of days for like a week i want to say something like that have fun at work frederick yeah yeah it's 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 really weird and the whole camera in the pictures thing is a whole nother fucking can of worms that we'll get into yeah uh, okay, by all accounts, Lizanne was not 100% fit at the time. I don't know where they're getting that from. The only thing I can kind of chalk that up to is apparently the host family had made some comments about her coughing a lot mm. and claiming she had asthma, but there was no inhaler in the anywhere that was found, yeah. and I haven't heard that corroborated by families. So huh. I and if you look at the pictures of them, like they're they young, fit, they're yeah. thin, yeah, like they're not out, like fit, fit or anything, <clears throat> but yeah, in yeah, they're not enough shape wrestling yeah. in an NXT, but they're yeah, they don't look like they would struggle on a typical hike. No, period. Maybe and a little sunburn. Okay, this hike was only supposed to take three to five, six hours, and what they had packed with them kind of suggests that that's all that they were prepared for. They had a little backpack with their phone, passport, like $83, a um, couple sunglasses, and in the backpack that they found was two bras as well. Um, and just kind of not like real intense, like hiking boots or anything. So this is supposed to be a relatively moderate trail. Yeah, they didn't know? have a fucking camelback. No, they so they were expecting to just go for, you know, a handful of hours and come back but then it's a fucking trip by april 6th happens. their families had started ahead to the netherlands police were still looking thirty thousand dollar reward was put up but nothing went on for a long time so about 10 weeks after that right they go they, they come up missing about 10 weeks after a local native woman found that backpack yeah um apparently it was a lycra backpack i don't know what that really means or if it has any significance but i do know that for the amount of time that so we lost contact with them what's up okay so after so within that 10 week time mm -hmm. i believe i heard that the police there stopped the search and designated it to the indigenous people and okay. said you guys search for it and then that that might be why the indigenous people kind of found them but because they know the area much better yeah. anyways but um I yeah. heard they were deputized. I like I don't I wasn't able to confirm, but I, I did hear something along those lines. Huh. Like they were like, hey, I think it, I'm gonna say Nagobi. I don't know if I'm mispronouncing yeah. it. Yeah. But that's like a that's one confirmed tribe that lives in that area. Yeah. So I guess it makes sense for the police to be like, eh, we don't want to do this for another fucking few months. Just yeah. let us know if you see anything. Exactly. Doesn't sound like good police work, but I exactly. I, I understand how that happened. I guess. Uh huh. Okay, so yeah, she found it in a rice paddy. This is a local woman in the forest area. She knows the area. She said that backpack had definitely not been there not the day been, before. Yeah. And then all the things that uh, you said had been in the backpack were there, which, like you said, suggested a short hike, not a long trip through a jungle. Mm -mm. 
Um, people from the Justice Department picked up the backpack with a helicopter. Police assumed it was uh, it had drifted down the river to that spot, but the backpack was dry and everything in it was in good working order and also dry. Every, yeah, the phones, the phones, and the cameras, cameras still worked and in working condition. But they're just like, oh, it floated down the river. Yeah, no, it didn't. And that, like, uh, I have some notes later on. It wasn't like a waterproof throw it in the river no, backpack. No, 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 it was no. like the equivalent of like a fucking Jan Sport backpack, yeah. right? Like. Like you, you can't walk in the rain without your shit getting drenched. Exactly. You know? So, very interesting. Uh, okay, and I guess even waterproof backpacks are typically designed to be able to, was not designed to be able to withstand being submerged in lakes and rivers. Yeah. Uh, besides, it had been raining heavily in the prior weeks, and the backpack did not look like it had spent any weeks or any time in a super wet, muddy jungle. No. It would, in fact, have endured 72 plus days of humidity, of rain, weather, of mud, yeah, just of wet. weather. Yeah. yeah. And nothing. It looked like it was fine. Just which brand new still, basically. My first thought was, okay, someone took it into somewhere, obviously, like maybe not a house, but somewhere covered, oh, somewhere yeah. safe, right? 100%. There's no other explanation for that. Mm -mm. That like some of the, like, so, you know, some other stuff, you like, you can have a bullshit explanation and people will believe it. Yeah. But no, the backpack being completely dry, the phones were not in the river no. or else they wouldn't work. Exactly. And it was 2014. They didn't even have, like, you know, like there are some phones now that are waterproof. Water, yeah. No, they didn't have that shit in 2014. It, no. Well, military probably does, but normal people did not. Exactly. Two females. Yeah. Just traveling, man. Yeah. They're, no. And to recap what was in there, there was, uh, Two bras, two sunglasses, empty water bottle, uh, is, yeah. both girls' phones, one a Samsung, one an iPhone, yep. uh, digital camera, a Canon power shot uh, without a lens cap. I don't know what significance that means. Lizanne's passport, not not Chris's, which is weird, and Chris's medical insurance card and 83 American dollars. I have heard, well, I've seen conflicting information. I've heard 83 and I've read 37. Interesting. I've yeah. only heard 83, yeah. I did. I had only heard 83 until today when I was trying to get notes down for this. Huh. So I'm throwing it out there. Some people say it was 37. Interesting. Um, I'm going to deviate a little bit from the timeline here to talk about an article I read from a dude who is from Spain and does a lot of traveling. And he kind of was writing about the local people, how to travel. And he was saying 83 bucks is like an extravagant amount to have on a hike for sure. Yeah. But even like walking around doing shit, he said, everything costs change. Uh, tourists and travelers carry change because they know it's an inconvenience because like, a random dude on the street can't break a 20. Oh, it's damn. like, you know, it's like uh -huh. when you go down to TJ and it's like people selling stuff. It's yeah. not walking into Walmart to buy a bunch of shit. So 83 bucks was extravagant. And, um, I mean, we don't really know how they spent their money. Their bank records were not released or anything like that. Mm. And, you know, they, they shouldn't be. That's not our business, I guess. Yeah. But if they were pulling out 100 bucks at a time, 83 sounds like, okay, whatever. If they're pulling out a 20 every week or whatever, like 83 bucks sounds even more strange. So we don't know their spending habits, but the fact that there was that much cash in there at all is weird. Like, were they trying to dip out? Do they just carry that much cash around normally? Yeah. But like, like I said, they seem like experienced travelers, so it yeah. seems like they wouldn't be carrying that around on a hike where they only took one fucking water bottle. Mm -hmm. Very strange. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to leave that off. I'm going to leave that off. Allegedly, the same person who found the backpack and the rice paddy also made a video of the backpack's uh, contents. So the lady who found it, I've read that the lady that found it in the rice paddy, right? The Nagobi tribes woman. Mm -hmm. I've read that she found it, handed it over to police, said it hadn't been there. And I've read that she found it, took a video of the contents, how she's a local tribes woman, and then handed it over to that fucking tour guide yeah. who then handed it over to the police. Exactly. Yeah. So that falls in line with him being sketch and having his hands in everything. Exactly. But their whereabouts before the whereabouts after the you know like he kind of now like you that you've told me that mm -hmm. it seems he's the consistent thread yeah i don't even know his name i don't even i don't i think a lot of people have kept his name out because he's never even been named a suspect which so but he, people how, know he's man. still a guy like i said i think there could just be some shady stuff going on where they didn't want the news to really get out and you know they just kind of swept it under the rug but i don't know it's, it's weird. So allegedly, they um, they got all the contents, adjusted for fingerprints and all that stuff. Thirty four different fingerprints were found. Thirteen on the backpack, twelve on the phones and camera, and you six thirty four. 
Yeah. Initially, I heard 33. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. That would make sense because that number popped up again. Popped up somewhere else. And yeah. not that I think someone's intentionally putting 33 bones to be a culty, although I, I, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah. But I think there's like, this is going to get weird. I think there's like a way that the universe communicates. And uh -huh. if you start to decode shit and look for shit, you kind of get a hint of what's going on. And so I think it. I, I believe it would have been 33. That's what I heard I initially. Think it, yeah, I think it lends itself to the mystique and the disparity of the whole thing. That's why I almost like an immediately texted you. I was like, 33 fucking fingerprints and the 33 bones? I was like, what the fuck? But I wanted to save it for this. But yeah, yeah. that was initially what I heard on everything that I was watching and reading up on was uh, 33 fingerprints on the, on the uh, backpack. Which... 33 or 34 what the fuck are that many fingerprints doing on the backpack right. we can say both girls you may be able to say the host, host of the family, family yeah. right uh maybe the guy the woman who found it maybe a rando cop in there somewhere yeah i'm i'm exaggerating and that's only six exactly and there were fucking 34 <coughs> fingerprints found and six on the bras which is the most disturbing part for me that is weird because bras underwear by nature is touched by less people than yeah. a backpack would yeah. would be then i would say maybe two yeah. Maybe three if the local, if the family they were staying with moved their laundry without washing it at some point. Yeah. But that's an exaggeration and that's still only three. So like, I, and apparently none of this forensic work came back with any people. Like it didn't match up. It didn't find anything in the Panamanian base. It didn't find anything over in the Deutsch base. I guess at one point, one of them one of the fingerprints popped up as something but like that person was never questioned huh. or anything like that which lends itself to the fucking cops just being like sleep it under the rug yeah. get past it we just want to end this whole thing yep. uh, the report carried out oh shoot I want to delete this whole thing again <laughs> <laughs> the report carried out by the Netherlands Forensic Institute revealed that also three fingerprints were found on the self-adhesive tape that joined the camera and the phones I didn't even know about that until I started reading today. Huh. Yeah. Back to day one. Okay, here we go. Y yeah, it's so here hard to tell. Go. It's so hard to, like, tell the story, too. Yeah, Because if you tell because... every single detail as you go, it doesn't make a lot of sense. You have to do, no, like, an overview and I then go know. back. Oh, it's so crazy. That's why I was like, wait, did you get about the pictures and stuff? Because that really set the time frame well. It, it's really weird. But, yeah. Yeah, so interesting. Back on day one, allegedly, to the best of our knowledge, they went hiking around 11, right? Yeah. We'll just say the taxi cab guy got his number wrong for now. Yeah. They went hiking around 11, and at about 1639 is what, 439? Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, when it was still light outside, a first attempt was made to call emergency services. Yep. Uh, around 10 minutes later, a second attempt was made. Okay, that's just, uh, yeah. On day two of their disappearance, which is Wednesday, April 2nd, calls were made at 6.58 a.m., 8.14 a.m., 10.53 a.m., and 13.56 p.m., which 156. is 1.56 p.m. So, this is weird behavior, right? If you're calling 911, it's usually a few times back-to-back -back until you get something, mm -hmm. right? Or you don't get something, and that's kind of it. But theirs were, like, sporadic and spaced out. I mean, to me, that makes sense. You think so? Yeah, because my logic is, okay, let's... Okay, we're fucked. We're lost. You know, we're lost. Right. But let's not use our battery too much. So let's try, try, try. Like, try once. Try again in an hour. Try again in a few hours. Just to be like, so we're conserving our battery. So we're not just using it super quickly, you know? Yeah. That's my explanation on why they kind of were a little sporadic with using it, using the phone in general. Um, Let me ask you this. Let's pretend you and I... But there was only one call per time? Um. Well, I have, so... No, so... So, yeah. Six, six, 6.58... 814, 1053. There was just one call per each of those times. Let me look. Um, so it varies. It looks like on April 2nd at 658, there were two attempts made. At 1053, there were three attempts made. Yeah. So at to me, that makes sense. It's like, try twice. Okay, it's not working. We don't have service. Maybe scramble around somewhere else. At this time, okay, let's take a break again. Let's try since we're here now. 
okay, turn our phones on, make a couple calls, still no, you know what I mean? And we should point out that they were dialing 911 and 112, yeah. which I guess is the Deutsch uh, emergency number. Yeah. Um, and for the record, apparently now and then emergency phone calls do work, even if you're out of range, allegedly. This is what I've read people mm -hmm. saying. If you're out of range, no cell tower, no minutes on your phone, whatever, whatever, it's still supposed to work and go through. Yeah. For whatever reason, that wasn't happening reason. with these people. Yeah. Um, I guess. I don't trust it. I don't believe it would go through. How would it? In a dense forest like that? Right. Like yeah. the cell phone company could be like, oh, yeah, it'll work wherever you're at. But they haven't gone into the fucking exactly. Amazon to, exactly. to test it. So this is also the day, April 2nd. Yep. When one of their calls did make a short connection. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Me some water. During the first call made at 658, Lazan Samsung phone managed to make a connection uh, with 112, which is interesting, for one to two seconds. Yep. Which, like, I mean, a, when a call makes a connection like that, there's a lot that you can tell. You know, it'll tell you, like, you should tell you the where, phone, where, yeah. who's attached to the phone, stuff like that. But they didn't even get to talk to anyone, so that sucks. Connection was broken off again, and the phone was switched off as in turned off or deactivated mm -hmm. after approximately 36 seconds do you think so you think that's normal they call didn't work turn it off yeah <laughs> Con conserve battery see i i saw that and i was like that seems sketch it seems sketch that it connected and, and then the then phone ended off. and then the phone turns off Th that is strange but again as to me <laughs> I would be trying to conserve battery if it's not working, but again, it did connect for a second, so why not try one more time? That's yeah. interesting. It, right, yeah. and why not try from the other phone? Yeah. I'm like, hey, I, it fucking connected for a second. Get your shit out. Yeah, yeah. Also, like, I mean, I don't know what they knew about being in nature or hiking and survival. And but where they were. Yeah. And fucking where they were, I guess so, yeah. I would try to go up before I make any calls. I'd try to go higher, uh -huh. higher ground, right? Yeah. I don't know. Um, okay. Um, it's not clear exactly what Janice dis disconnected the call. About an hour later, the iPhone from Chris was used to call 112 again. A screenshot photo was made from the telephone screen, perhaps accidentally. That's weird, too. That's either, I feel like that's either indicative of she was freaking out and mishandling her own phone, mm -hmm. or someone else was fucking with it and accidentally took a screenshot. I yeah. take screenshots accidentally sometimes. Yeah, I do too sometimes. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess. Uh, between the last call of day two and the first call of day three uh, is about 19 and a half hours. Sometimes I take a screenshot of some. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to screenshot that. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> delete. <laughs> Permanent delete. <laughs> Permanent delete. Get it off the phone altogether. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then followed a string of attempts like to... Like someone did on one of their phones, huh? Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. There's, like and it's well we'll get to it but yeah. it's weird that there's like seemingly minute tampering yeah but not a lot to just make it all go away exactly it's like they were trying to fabric it's like something or someone was trying to fabricate trying to create a, story. a narrative yeah. yeah i agree yeah for sure so then followed a string of attempts uh attempts to just find a reception signal which okay that that makes sense don't waste it trying to call find a signal but that does mean a, a change in strategy from their end which mm -hmm. is interesting mostly following a specific pattern of daily times when the phones are switched off and on that was another weird thing is it seemed like they started to go in patterns it started to be like between the, this it was like 10 and 11 the, yeah. and then like one and two or some shit like that yep almost like without fail for a handful of days yeah so my conspiracy brain is like why were they using those times it wasn't daybreak it wasn't evening yeah when you think like well maybe there's less shit fucking in the air and less cell phones so maybe we'll have a better shot it was like before lunch and after lunch yeah which to me screams third party you know what i mean they're out of the room make the fucking call or they're yeah, not looking yeah, make yeah, the fucking call yeah exactly and it's never at the same time but it was around the same time i don't know mm -hmm. they were switched on and off again uh every so often on day five the battery of the samsung died from lazan and the phone was no longer used the iPhone from Chris was... Here, can you read that? I got a cough. Yeah. 
The iPhone from Chris was, however, switched on and off until April 11th, which seems uh, like a very long time for a smartphone, uh, you know, around for 2014 battery wise, especially considering uh, Dutch forensic investigators have confirmed that both the phone, both phones actually had only 50% battery life on day one by the time the girls walked up the uh, Pian, what did, how did I pianista, put it? Pianista. pianista. Yeah, there you go. Pianista trail. Which, if we pause on that for a second, that's pretty fucking crazy that before everybody had internet on their phone everywhere, a battery would last for that long. They did used to last longer, though. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I mean, I remember my little brick Nokia lasted for, like, months. Exactly, I swear, like, it, and dude, you could play Snake to, on it. It was yeah. great. And then they started realizing, oh, we need the updates. We need to get them to buy the new ones. So then they started throttling the batteries <laughs> and whenever they would come out with a new one they had to guess they got sued for this or something apple did um because it was proven that when a new iphone comes out they would lessen your battery strength on your your current iphones and i had that problem dude it was crazy i remember seeing that <clears throat> but, i'm gonna re- i'm gonna read this real quick yeah from tech protect world freedom forum Aluminum and other metals and vaccines injected straight into our bloodstream will turn our bodies into an antenna and 5G will fuck us up when they pump it up. True. Yeah. Facts. We had a little rant on uh, vaccines, vaccines earlier. Yeah. We're trying very hard to stick to this one subject that we put out for ourselves and we're not doing a great job. <laughs> but it's also interesting. But yeah, you're not right, you're not wrong about the vaccines. Not at we're all. not taking them for the record. So, you know, nope. let it be stated here. <clears throat> Then on day 11, on uh, April 11th, Chris's phone was switched on again at 10.51 and stayed on for an hour. It was the last time it was used. Used. It's also important to mention that on day 6, when Lizanne's Samsung battery died, there was suddenly multiple attempts to activate Chris's phone. However, the wrong PIN code, or no PIN code, was entered from the afternoon of the 5th several times. Yeah. And I guess her phone, let me know if you read this, had two PIN codes? Like, there was like one to get in and then like one like, like they had two whereas like now on our phones we have one Just four digit one. Uh-huh. she had two I didn't read that no <clears throat> so it was like two lines of defense yeah. um, and n- I mean you don't forget your four digit code no it's possible the friend like maybe one went down and the other one's like shit let me try to use her phone exactly I don't know the pin number but I wouldn't try like that many times no I would get I would take a few guesses and be like well, fuck. That, yeah, and then back to conserving battery. But then people were saying, I read some, <clears throat> even back then in 2014, you don't, all you have to do is swipe left or whatever to make the emergency call. I read that so, as well. So it's almost like they needed access to inside of the phone, but were unable to. And yeah. I agree. So that's interesting <clears throat> for sure. And why do you, let's just throw the conspiracy time, why would somebody be need to get into the phone as opposed to just calling emergency services well there is that interesting thing with i don't know if you got to it or whatever but picture 509 um was deleted and actually permanently deleted where they say even professionals couldn't even recover it so it had to be deleted from like a computer how it was with the fucking backpack in some so now i'm gonna say Maybe the girls, but for sure their belongings were moved to a location that had shelter, shelter from the elements sure. and electricity. Uh huh. Right? Because even, dude, this was a trip. Even in some of the pictures, they were gone for <clears throat> eight days or something. And they, they don't look weathered. They don't look beat up. They don't like people are saying their hair looks pretty clean for what it, where they are, and what it should be. So that leads to somebody thinking they like a guide like the guide was guiding them to shelters or something like that and kind of you know until he event you know speculation theory whatever till he ends up killing them or something happens or whatever fucking something happens um yeah there is that's weird too it's like they don't look beat up from a handful of the pictures that were taken like seven eight days later or something like that so i, I have don't know there's something that. with <clears throat> that picture 509 that was obviously deleted and permanently deleted and yeah that that one's it's who a, knows it's who an knows? interesting yeah it's interesting um and i have something on that 
I have actually I'm going to come back to that real quick. Let me finish up. Uh, between the seventh and the tenth day, Chris's phone was not successfully entered at all, or her pin code. Uh, despite the girls being awake and active, seemingly on the night of April eighth, when around ninety photos were taken by someone, uh, according to some sources, no less than seventy-seven attempts were made to get into the phone. Uh, however, during these four days, some claim that the wrong pin code was entered. Then, okay, so. Uh, shenanigans things you don't have the answers to with picture 509 if i remember correctly from my readings it kind of was it could be theorized that it was like a turning point like yeah. before they're happy they're hiking exactly. and i've noticed this and all their pictures they're like yeah like they're really happy they're showing it they're thumbs up they're together or yep. whatever it's very uh very staged photos or staged selfies right yeah. and then 509 disappeared and then after that the pictures that I saw of, oh, and I always forget which one's which, but um, I don't want to be disrespectful, but the redhead, whose name is Kramers. Okay, so she doesn't look happy in the pictures after 509, after missing photo 509. She looks, to me, for someone who has to like teach facial expressions to people with autism so they understand, to me it looks like she was not happy, she was not enjoying herself, but she was going along with something. Do you, yeah. Did you see those? Yeah. The ones where they're kind of uh, crossing the river. Right. And then the one that's really weird where it almost looks like they're at a cave type thing. Um, but yeah, well, weren't those pictures taken like seven, eight days later? So if you're lost for that amount of time, you would kind of look disgruntled as well. Um. You then why take you the definitely pictures? wouldn't be happy. Yeah, that's what's weird, right? No pictures, no video. That's so true. That's that's really true. Like if you're well, maybe to show here we are, this is where we were. I don't I don't know. I, I, I would, don't know. And, but you and, would think there would be other pictures yeah, or other There's none of Lizanne. After that, it's all of Chris. True. Which is like I'm like, okay, so whatever third party was with them had a fucking thing for redheads. Because he's take like the pictures are like from her like of her from behind yeah like from like she's wearing jean shorts so yeah. like her legs are exposed and it's a picture from behind yeah she's walking over there it's a picture of her like she uh, I don't know what number picture it is but there's one that you had mentioned where she's looks like she's like ducking yeah right then hands kind of behind her back a little bit yeah and before People speculating that she's tied up I don't know I don't know there's a lot of speculations but. yeah yeah so that was kind of where I started to go like off the deep end was that one picture because I found some dude who had made a forum and he like lightens and fucks with pictures like professionally so he grabbed that one and he like lightened it and you can see you, you see her bending over with her hands but I think her hands are behind her back I'm not yeah. sure someone said that her hand is like this covering her face I don't buy that because there's no shade over her face like yeah. even here you can see that see, yeah um but it's not on hers i think her hands are behind her back but i don't necessarily think it's because she was tied up why would the person have taken a picture of her tied up hmm, you never mid motion know. Weird. and then not delete it when they deleted 509 yeah like yeah. does that mean 509 was worse than that one but they left that one there yeah. or, or what the fuck but in that picture the the dude that lightened it and uh, i'm gonna do my best to post like as much as i can about uh -huh. this but in the photo there's something overhead did you see that it looks like someone had gotten branches or palm fronds yeah, like or something a makeshift ceiling even though it's not yeah. stable you can see the sun coming through yeah. it yeah but it's some sort of cover cover right exactly. like shelter cover uh, made of natural something. stuff yeah in the, branches, branches, presumably leaves, in the area whatever yeah exactly foliage whatever exactly there's it looks to me like either uh a can or like a box like a food or a juice box on the ground mm -hmm. and that dude that did the picture lightning suggested that that means people have been there if there's yeah. human trash that's where it gets on there's people there mm -hmm. and then there's two other things there's off to the right it looks like white writing on wood but you can't fucking read yeah. it and then on the left side i don't know if you remember this but on the left side there's something else there and i have two things that i thought it looked like are you uh -huh. familiar with that do you remember that at all um, but just what, what do you suspect? So at first I saw like a steering wheel from a car. Okay. I didn't that, see that. Uh -huh. that was the first thing I saw. Uh -huh. And then I was looking and looking and looking. And then I saw, cause you have to zoom in so much. Like you can't really tell. No. So at first it looked like, like a steering wheel, right? Like you have the middle and then it kind of branches off to the circle. Mm -hmm. Kept looking, kept looking, came back with fresh eyes and I was looking. And now it only looks to me like the skull of something with horns. 
and then like a circle around it. Huh. Like if somebody had a big circle and they put a fucking skull in the middle. Yeah. Which people do. People fucking do that shit. You go to Texas, there's skulls everywhere in circles. Yeah. You know what I mean? But this looked like it was homemade and tied up in this area where this girl who's missing now is. Yeah. Later on when I was reading some shit, I found someone talking about some stuff that may or may not go on in Panama and they had taken some pictures from a hike and their sure as shit was a fucking steer skull or something with horns that was like hanged up huh. on a tree somewhere. Wow. So it wasn't that same location. Yeah, yeah. But it's not out of the question. It's not out yeah. of the fucking question, man. This is okay, so I was looking at that picture a lot as well. And people, you know, that one he highlighted, it looks like a red figure. Dude, that looks like just foliage. Um, somebody said, oh, uh, there's looks to be like a native with orange markings. I'm like, dude, that's just foliage. It, like, if you look at it, it looks like it's just plants. But I could, like, I initially saw both of these things. I was like, oh, shit, that looks interesting. Yeah. That looks like something. And then you, like, look at them more like, okay, it's just plants. Like, honestly, but I didn't see that. But what was interesting, there does look to be like some sort of writing or painting or something. And then someone pointed out in the comments too, that if you take that picture and you follow her waistline just over to the right, there's other cave paintings right there, like we're in front of her, like to the right. And huh. um, yeah, it's like, why is nobody talking about these cave paintings? And then I saw, I was like, oh fuck, there really is. I was like, oh shit. So there, there Weird. is something. There is something with that picture for sure. Like it's significant, one hundred percent. It's really interesting. And I'm like, someone knows where that is. Someone can fucking find that area. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Why are we? Why has nothing happened yet? Yeah. Um. I guess of all the pictures found, seven were never made public. Uh. But some of them leaked, allegedly. And it's interesting because this story like i go to read about it and there's comments from 2014 when it happened and there's comments from like yesterday yeah like people exactly. are like continuously jumping in and trying to figure it out yeah i didn't get a call did i okay no i'm good um but yeah allegedly at some point someone had said that the pictures were not released to the public because it showed the girls in bad shape like yeah. beat up and shit I haven't found any evidence of that but dude there's some inconsistencies even with the family because they said that only three mm -hmm. of the nighttime pictures were had anything had anything them. but then it comes out that like more than a handful like 15 or something of them are are able to be viewed and like have discernible yeah. things in them and stuff right. so why is that why did the family lie about that that's super interesting too you know i don't know and i'm curious as to who offered that thirty thousand dollar reward and who was gonna pay out if someone had evidence mm -hmm. do you know what i mean like was it the families did, were they sitting on that I cash don't know. or was it someone else did yeah. the families inherit that cash i don't know but yeah that that was one of the points i had as well they didn't seem to be completely honest which if my daughter disappeared too god forbid i would fucking lose my mind like maybe i would lie to the public too fuck them right yeah i don't know yeah um some dude was this palm tree oh no no, no. this was some some other anecdotal piece of information this lady said in april the april that they went missing my teacher told me that two young women had gone missing from the sister school in Phuket, Panama. That's talking about our girls. Mm -hmm. They had left other belongings and not told anyone where they were going. The last anyone saw of them, they were talking to two strange men making plans to see a waterfall. That's the only place that I found that is that one person saying oh, it. Shit. I haven't seen that That's anywhere so else. That's so interesting because I did see something that there's a waterfall not too far away from where they were found so they could have or not too far away from the trail that they initially were going off of i think it's a little far from where they were actually found but it wasn't too far from where the initial continental divide was yeah it was just on the other side not too far away so yeah people were suspecting that they were kind of trying to go see that yeah and got lost which makes sense tourist attraction waterfall yeah who, but if that's true were they talking to people about where to find it and mm -hmm. if so who that, and yeah, did they go with true. them that's interesting yeah so once the backpack was found we're jumping all over the place we're uh tarantinoing this story when the backpack was found mm -hmm. that's um called for more searches right they go back out there to yeah. go look around start it up again and that was when they found uh i believe chris's jean shorts uh, but folded found it up they say folded up exactly on a rock but then also they say the locals say it was they were found in a river yeah 
So, so there's again, another inconsistencies and yeah. like needlessly. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Like the big deal should be that they were found. Yeah. And we're arguing over how they were found, which means something, but like what? You know, it almost seems like deflection. I don't know, man. I don't know. The guides themselves the guides themselves later claim that they found it in the water, uh, in the river. Yeah. Um, some other guy, palm tree dude, said, not because the trail is visible, you can see the trail, but rather of all the mud, running water, uneven terrain, and weird voodoo shit hanging in the trees. So huh. the, that's the reason I threw this comment in there. Yeah. I'm seeing skulls. I, I thought I saw one, and then for sure someone in the area posted a picture of another. Interesting. And this dude who has hiked there, he said he went there in 2012 to go hike it, uh-huh. said he saw voodoo, voodoo shit hanging in the trees. Yeah. I didn't, quote, I didn't get anywhere near the supposed monkey bridges, which allegedly the two girls were on as well. Yeah. Uh, where the Panama government claims the girls may have fallen off into the Serpentine River. Nobody goes that way, especially two young girls, in my opinion. I saw several other people turning back as well quite quickly. There's no way the two girls would have carried on down that route past the first stream due to the poor terrain and creepiness of the area. I'm talking animal skulls and trees and ceremonial bracelets and bones suspended from trees on a string. I guess that's native land. You don't want to be you don't want to be treading on. Uh-uh. Although I saw a very friendly, uh, smiling native walk past me on that part of the trail. I wasn't supposed to be there. But so dude, that's what I'm saying. Like even here, you're not supposed to be on native land, dude, unless you're like invited and it has a very strange feel. And this is in America, you know? Yeah. And um yeah, I just know when I've been on it, uh the couple of times I've been on it, dude, it's weird. You feel like you shouldn't be there. Oh shit, now I want to go. It's it's so strange. You just get Do this you have feeling. any Indian in you? Or native? Um, I don't think so. No. I allegedly have some. I wonder if that means I won't feel, I won't feel weird. Uh, you won't feel the heavy. Yeah, I think I have like an eighth or something. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know, but yeah, it's just you. You feel like you don't belong. Like it's theirs. You know what I mean? Like I they do. live by their own rules and shit for sure. And that's just here. And you know, so yeah. I can't imagine in Panama where they've been able to live like that. Yeah. <laughs> no country, kidding. So. And Crazy. where apparently the fucking local cops are like, ah, you guys can kind of do whatever you want to. Yeah. You know, they don't seem to care too much. Mm-mm. So we touched on this, but it really came to an end when they started to find bones, right? Bone yeah. remnants were found several walking hours away uh, farther up the trail. Uh, June 19th, it was confirmed that indeed human remains had been found in the search for Chris Kramers and or in the search for Chris Kramers and Lizanne Froon. One of the shoes, so there was a shoe found, contained human bones. So the whole foot was still in the shoe. Yeah. What do you think about that? Dude, it's insane. Some people online were like, it's totally normal. Feet get found all the time. Um, I believe it's called disarticulation, where if it like a shoe is in a foot and someone falls on a cliff and dies like sometimes their fucking foot falls off uh-huh. i i read it and i was like i i, I don't i don't think this is normal i wouldn't consider yeah. that normal that's fucking weird yeah and uh, to me it's again screams third party yeah brown and shoe- the fact that no other bones or no other body parts except her pelvis that was later found yeah which seem to be bleached or lied or have some sort of chemical on right. it people say it's like they they would have been missing for like Oh man, like 10 months, like way longer than what they were missing for. Like that's how much decomposing her bones had or whatever, you know? Yeah. So and, it was like advanced the process. And so. only the half of pelvis found was bleached. The foot yeah. was not. And that there were some other exactly. uh, foot bones yeah. that were found with even some skin and flesh on them still. Mm-hmm. So, and, and people that were investigating this, doctors and experts and all that stuff, said that they didn't find any evidence of like animals fucking with it so it's not like uh, they were killed by a rabbit jaguar no bite marks or anything on the bones or the the shoe or the backpack or anything you know (laughs) nothing nothing like that so then to say they were eaten by animals doesn't make sense doesn't make sense some people said the bleaching was done by the sun which okay maybe if you leave a bone on in the sun it has those qualities of a bleached bone this was in like the forest and (laughs) And dense foliage and and bones stay inside you for the most part Uh, yeah yeah like that too like a foot okay you can get your foot caught in something have to cut it off i understand that half of a pelvis yeah that means the whole body is gone yeah it's disemboweled is in pieces is in parts 
You know what I mean? Oh, but that's normal if you do this or that. <laughs> that's what, yeah. I, 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 and I do do it. You know, I jump to like everything is true always, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so I try to be like, okay, let's look at this fucking more reasonable shit. None of it's making sense for me in uh -huh. this case. None. Um, the. So apparently where they found the shorts is close to one of these monkey bridges, which is also where they found some of the bones. I'm trying to find, there's one thing I wanted to jump to. Um, I can't find it here, but apparently, let me know if you read this. Wow. There was a ball of skin found as well. They said it was somebody investigating that had found it, said it was found near the bones, mm -hmm. right? And they said it was a like a ball of skin slash flesh. I did not read this. And or hear this. they basically said the way it had been manipulated was like purposeful. Huh. It's not like you fell down a cliff and, you know, a piece of your fucking scalp goes flying. They said it was like crumpled up fucking ball of skin. Ew. Yeah. That's gross. Yeah. The fuck? I, I know, man. Um, so on uh, June, I'm sorry, uh, June 20th, the girl's family of 2014, the girl's families made a statement saying that uh, they had really reasons to believe that the girls had passed away. Of course, because they had found human remains and not, I don't think you can live without half a pelvis. Like that's, <laughs> yeah. that's fucking weird. Uh, eventually a rib bone was also found uh, on August 2nd. That was of Chris, um, her number 10 rib, which yeah. like, what the fuck, dude? Half a pelvis, number 10 rib, uh -huh. left foot. Well, it's, it. Again, my mind goes to, it seems occult, like occulty, right? Like we're, these, we're going to use these bones. These are the ones we don't need, or uh -huh. we're going to use half of this and fucking like throw the rest of the way. And a foot of this and uh Exactly. Of this. Oh, here we go. A forensic pathologist uh, thinks also that the piece of skin was manipulated by someone and it was stored in a dark, cool place, oh, man. which makes you wonder how anyone could have found it. Um, that's pretty much it for all of the evidence that was found i didn't even we're over time but i didn't even go into all the threads i wanted to either yeah like i've been reading this shit for two and a half weeks and i probably could have done another two and a half apparently the taxi driver that drove them there dead Got murdered <clears throat> yeah or killed or i read there was found like in a river right something i like didn't that. see the river and i i, I didn't i've look, i googled his name real quick i didn't find anything and i was like okay we'll move on i gotta keep yeah. looking other shit up but I had read somewhere that like six or seven people that were loosely connected to this ended up dead shortly after. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Um, I also like, I, I'm, you know me, I'm going the route. Yeah, there's route. something with the taxi driver too, because yeah, he's given the wrong time or has yeah. the wrong time or the time doesn't add up. And then, and now he's gone, man. And now he, he got killed or something happened to him. So, and pretty shortly after, like, yes. what was it within, within a year, I want to say. I want to say like, yeah, like even less than that. Like yeah. to the point where you're like, oh, well, it's obviously connected to the girl's disappearance. Uh-huh. Um, apparently there is, so in addition to the Nagobi that seemed to be pretty chill and work with the cops or whatever, yeah. there's, um, a tribe called the Conejos, which means rabbit. Um, and apparently these guys are now to the point where most people consider it like mythology. But if, if, if one were to ask, well, they're natives in the area, they're like, oh yeah, the rabbit people, they live in the forest, they hunt like this, they're a little squattier, a little shorter, and they are cannibalistic. They eat people. Oh, damn. Um, so, and there's been uh, actually somewhat, at least in Panama, I don't know if it's like in the exact same spot, but in Panama, hiking trails, whatever, there were murderers that were going out there preying on tourists. There were cannibals that had been found fucking yanking tourists and eating them. So there's some shit that goes on down there. I don't have like one solid theory for what happened to these two girls, but I'm 100% going third party was involved in their disappearance. Yeah. Right. Cause That's the, the consensus like. is 100, yeah. that they fell down off a cliff and died. That's what most, most and that people just doesn't add up. It does yeah. not add it up, man. Add up. So, okay. This is what I've been seeing as well, which kind of would make, Maybe the most bit of sense is that it's both where there was an accident, but some like that guide did catch up to them and was kind of guiding them where to go and then ended up one of them ended up dying or he ended up killing it, whatever happened. But what if there was like a legitimate, they got lost like legitimately didn't know what was going on got found by the guy they trusted him because they just saw him the day before a couple days before 
he should know the area so he's guiding them where he knows that nobody will look or yeah. whatever and then kind of does whatever happens nobody knows exactly this is all speculation the pictures are strange because it's like did they take them did a third party take them to set up a narrative or and again or like what? once like, you hit a certain point don't know if there's any people in the pictures it's the fucking redhead yeah like there's one yeah in the middle after like after a certain time yeah then it's just strictly her yeah is that because the other one was no longer around or exactly. is it because the third party she had more of an interest in the pictures or and that you know and see and it, i entertain that too weird. but they take selfies together so much exactly. like exactly they wouldn't you know it, it it hits an ominous weird and then those, in the road. those were after they had been lost a handful of days or something so and yeah, it, it's it is really strange, and then what the fact that they all, were only at fifty percent of their battery <laughs> life? Oh man, that's it's all really there's, interesting. There's one picture. There's like a bunch of pictures that were taken like in the middle of the night at one point. Ninety. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and one of them, it, most of them are like nothing, like le legit, like this fucking. This is the one where they said like the family said only three of them yeah. were uh able to be used but then years later a handful of years later uh, more have yeah. been released and like a lot more like a, another handful or two more you know so there was one there was like weird. a big stick twig thing and there was like red little bags tied yeah like a marker and looked like a marker it looked like sure. a marker and at first i was like okay so there's trash someone else was there at some point mm -hmm. someone had said um people make things similar to that to swat mosquitoes away in the area mm -hmm. but someone pointed out in one of their earlier pictures the two girls in the room there was a red plastic bag with some shit in there and it looks exactly like really it looks like the same consistency okay. durability of the bags that were on the twig interesting i don't know what the fuck that means yeah um apparently in one of the pictures that was also leaked it has like it looks like torn up paper and then maybe a piece of glass mm -hmm. and then a strap which i'm assuming was from the camera but someone like zoomed into the pieces of pieces of paper and they're saying that it's the same piece of paper that they had at some restaurant like a week prior hmm. so like maybe maybe they had some of that stuff in their backpack and then it was used for other used. reasons yeah. but anyway of those night pictures this is what haunted me the most mm -hmm. there's one picture i don't know if you've seen it and it's just of I believe Chris's the redhead redheads I don't mean to be uh -huh. disrespectful but it was just of the back of her head and it was it's just yeah. hair it's just fucking the back of her head and it's yeah. just hair and it's obviously outside because it's fucking pitch black right you don't like there's nothing else around and it's just the back of her fucking head and it fucking scares me like mm -hmm. it is the weirdest weirdest thing and I, yeah I don't know this like in a way all this research is almost like a tribute to them because obviously their lives were cut short and i'm gonna say it was so by young a too, third party dude. yeah they were smart they were benevolent they were you know what i mean trying to help they're the trying that's that what they i'm were saying vacationing in yeah like, exactly exactly crazy the whole thing kind of drives me crazy yeah. um i'm still gonna keep looking on it like yeah i don't know we might I probably hit will too because it is so fascinating you said you've been on it for a couple weeks now now at i'll least. probably get to that point where yeah. i'm just looking at it all the time and yeah, as soon as I started looking it up, I couldn't stop, you know? I was I like, I don't even need to that. take notes. I'm just soaking it in because it's so interesting. That's why I suggested it. Like, yeah. I wouldn't normally suggest a hiker going missing, but yeah. this one I was like, bro, I am knee-deep in Between this shit. Between the inconsistencies and, The yeah. deaths surrounding it. And then the 33 a couple of different times. I'm the like, animal mm. bones everywhere. And let's... I, I want to bring back this, too. The fucking dog made it out alive and went home. Yeah. Like, so at one point, there was a clear path to get the fuck out of there. Yeah, the dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Very weird. It is weird. Very weird. But we went a little Maybe over. Maybe the dog was like, I ain't going past the Continental Divide and just dipped while they continued. I, I don't doubt it, dude. Animals, I think they see the unseen. They can yeah. see shit we can't. I ain't going into that force. <laughs> like, yeah. And I'm like, did the dog have a leash? There were no pictures of the fucking dog they took on the hike. That's true, huh? Two young girls that take selfies pretty habitually are going to take a picture of the adorable dog. Yeah. I would take a picture of the fucking dog. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Doesn't make sense. None of it makes sense. <sighs> we might need to do a part two because there's like photoshopping evidence. There's deaths that surround it. Maybe we'll just touch back on it. Or maybe yeah. we should put it down. I don't know. I might go crazy.
Yeah, I don't know. Let's probably both look into it a little bit more and then uh, yeah, okay. make it another episode, see what else we come up with. But I don't think I'm going to stop until I know exactly what happened. And we never will know, then so I you'll never, never stop. stop. <laughs> so, anyway, that is going to do it for today. <clears throat> Shout out to Instagram for letting us go longer now. That's always nice. That but is cool. Doesn't force us to be so tight with yeah. it. But anyway, that is <laughs> going to be it. Said. Audio will be up on youtube tomorrow and yeah check out the channel uh real word 420 cult of personalities the real word podcast no world order podcast tuesday morning toast just type that in on youtube and something should pop up hmm. link is in our bio link will be in the bio and that is it until next time everybody peace